So um, what do you do with a person who, who continually come, comes back? And we, I guess we have a few of these, like, seemingly weekly with the same problems. And they well, seem we to haven't be seen it interrupt. change. We yeah. haven't seen it healed. Yeah, That's, that, that tends to be a situation when I local pastored in some of my circles and friends where I've run with. And we've had even some of my friends where it was an ongoing situation. Um, I always try to teach what faith is. I try to build people in relationship. Uh, I get people to talk to the Lord from their heart, uh, not to get into works, not to get into, but just believing he loves them. This is something I do a lot. I say, listen, I know what, this is probably like three weeks we've prayed for this, okay? How are you feeling right now? Are you, are you discouraged? Because this is an everyday thing for you. I'm just seeing you on a weekly basis. But you're living with this thing. Where, where's your heart? I just want to be healed. I don't know why God's not healing me. You know, I'm not afraid to open that up. I want that out of them. I want them to express what's going on. Because if they're just coming as a hit, miss, win, or lose, that's dangerous. If they're turning faith into a point in time and it's either hit or miss, that's not cool. We've got to turn faith into uh, a, a, a heart response, just an open heart to believe and receive everything he accomplished. That's what faith is. My heart open to receive everything he paid for and it will accomplish that. So I want to teach her relationship. I want to teach her that God loves her because of the cross. So some people say, well, if God loved me, why is he letting me go through this? Listen. Get off of that. That's deception for you. The measuring stick of God loving you is not your health. The measuring stick of God loving you is Christ crucified. And you fixing on Christ crucified is going to begin to influence your health. Don't get it mixed up. When you leave here and nobody's around and nobody's with you and you get in your car or you get home and get alone. Well, I, say, well, I came with my family. Okay. Get in a room as soon as you can. Get alone. Close the door. Just tell your family you're going to break away and just take a little time in the quiet. You say, Father, I thank you for loving me. You break all those lies, all those apprehensions, all those questions that are weighing God through your circumstance. Break it off and say, Father, I thank you that you love me. Or you'd have never sent your son and put him on that cross. And God, I just believe you're doing a work in me. I know it's been a rough three weeks, but I do believe. And so and so prayed for me and I'm thanking you that you're healing me. And I'm thanking you. And you try to get them to start developing this. Where they're not just turning healing into something they get through prayer from God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Healing can be very impersonal. Yeah. In the approach for it. Like where you're just trying to get something from him. Without the person of him. And you just want your results to change. I don't ever minister healing that way. I'm very personal with people. I want them to know he loves them. He's here. He's about to touch them. I, I let people know they can talk to him, be with him, have relationship. A person that's coming again and again, it's not a works thing. It's not to say it's their fault. I actually take responsibility when I'm in a situation like that. I say, listen, this isn't on you. Don't ever tell somebody, hey, if you go get more faith, you could be healed. Don't, Because they should look at you and say, well, where's your faith? I thought you're representing Christ. I thought he's in you. How about giving him to me? And that's a dead-end street. It's not about blame. But I tell people, I say, listen, here's what I'm convicted of. We, we just need to keep growing. Because if Jesus stood here and touched you, it's a done deal. And he's in me. And I believe I see him and I know. But yet I've been praying. I'm not hearing anything in, the, in my spirit to, to ask you this or tell you this. Don't get on what's blocking my healing. Because I'm not hearing anything like that. I'm hearing relationship. And God loves you. You start receiving his love. And I'm going to continue to believe. And every time you come in my heart, I'm going to thank God for the grace that's in your life. So how about you start talking to him the same way. Start developing this intimacy and relationship. You'd be amazed when you talk to people like that, how they'll confess and cry and say, well, I never felt worthy. Well, how hard do I believe in God can love me? And all of a sudden, that brings out a lot of things that are affecting them spiritually. You minister to those things. Don't put their healing contingent on them changing that. Just continue to grow them in truth and just keep believing with them. You know what I'm saying? But please don't grow weary in well-doing. Don't be like I, I, I with my own a home church when I pastored, I would say, listen, don't you guys pass people off and be like, oh, no, here they come again. We prayed like three weeks in a row and ain't nothing happened. And, you know, and, and think, boy, I hope they go down to them. <laughs> no, don't, don't do that. Let's pray, believe, receive all things. Amen? Amen. I hope I answered that. Yeah, that was okay. good.